And for more on the Kaduna attack, public affairs analyst Emmanuel Zaka joins us via Zoom from Kaduna. Good to have you join us. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me after a long while. So um, let's look at this situation critically. Um, recently in Sokoto State, we understand that um, residents were had to give some amount of money to bandits uh, um, sort of, sort of, as some sort of taxes. We also saw in Zamfara State where some villages had to put together, um, I think it was one million naira that was uh, reported to have been demanded by the bandits from each villagers or villages just to keep their villages secure. But, you know, the statement coming from the president um, seemed to have suggested that it's because security operatives have turned the heat on these bandits. That's why they are turning their attention to soft targets. You are in Kaduna State. Um, help us understand if the reality on ground matches the statement from the president. Not at all. I, when you were reading that news, I was just shaking my head. Is this a familiar line from the president? They said so when they came in with the Boko Haram. We are told that uh, Boko Haram had been technically defeated. So such language to dismiss what we have here in Kaduna, which is for me is an existential threat, uh, is, is familiar. It's familiar from the president. So I'm not surprised at all. What is on ground, I can bet you that every single person is a, is a soft target in Kaduna. Like I always say, except those that we... We, we protect with taxpayers' money. That's those that are in power. Thank God that the power is not forever. So when they come back to us and join us, they will also feel if, uh, if what we are feeling, we are just making a noise. But Kaduna, every single local government in Kaduna is, is, is under siege, except the, no, the, 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 the Kaduna North, which is where the, 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 the government house and the office of the governor is. Apart from that, almost everywhere is a soft target. We hear about killings. Sometimes when I, he, when I hear the president react to killings in Kaduna, I wonder whether he really is following other killings that are going on. Look, wh wh whoever is killed, whether the person is a Christian or a Muslim, shouldn't even bother us. We, are, we have a common humanity, so it shouldn't bother. But in southern Kaduna, killings are going on. To be modest, almost every week, people will be killed. Sometimes I get these calls from people who are directly there in the villages where these things happen so that they could get help. And you don't hear anything about it. Is it that, is there a particular number of people that must be killed before we say that killing is actually happening? Mm. But believe you me, on a daily basis in Kaduna, somebody is killed or kidnapped. Mm. Is, so, so it, from, it is so from, unfortunate that... So I had to jump in. Kaduna, Okay, come in, come in. Um, f from from residents, because we understand that you know, when we get the report from security operatives and the presidency, it does sound as if um, you have enough security on ground, and yet these situations like this continue to occur. What is the um, what sort of what is the structure or, or security architecture on ground, and what are the expectations from residents who um, are living in Kaduna? What is their expectations from security operatives? Uh, you know, in Kaduna, talking about whether we have enough boots on the ground, I am not the one saying it, but I attended a seminar one day. We are the commissioner, the commissioner, the commissioner of uh, internal security, oh, gave, gave a speech, and he said in that uh, in that uh, speech that Kaduna is too large. The area where these bandits are operating, the area is too large for them to to be able to contain because they don't have enough boots on the ground. So what, and they are also talking about the constraint that every governor, I hear every governor talking about, that they don't have this uh, security uh, personnel and security formations under their control. So you would think that uh, it is not if they have done their best. <laughs> this, is just, this is the best they, that they can do. So I agree completely with uh, former President Obasanjo when he said recently, when he was asked about what, what else Buhari could do, he said for him there is nothing else the man can do. He has done his best. So I'm applying it to Kaduna too. For them, there is nothing else that they can do. And I don't think it is, I mm. think it is even a waste of time to advise them at this point. They have mm. done everything that they think they should do. For me, look at it. They have even shut down network for two, about two months. Something that ordinarily should not have happened. 
For me, it is a shame that we are shutting down network mm. in this age when technology is supposed to help us in order to track these people. You know, um, so it, for it, me, it, let us just wait. Let us just push the days so that mm. they go and another another group will come. And, and yeah, it almost and sounds and as if um, you are you're sounding as if it, it is there is some sort of unwillingness to deal with the situation or the situation itself is impervious to solutions. But we'll see how the president has now directed intelligence and security chiefs to do everything they can to destroy the remaining vestiges. We'll see how that plays out. Always great to have you talk to us, um, public affairs analyst Emmanuel Zaka. Thank you very much. And again, I said the president, this is a normal statement. He will continue to say so, mm. and nothing necessarily serious will happen. All right. I hope this time around uh, he proves me wrong. Thank you very much. For Thank you me. for talking to us. God bless you.